next is in the same thing magnification so magnification again can be more than one or greater than uh, greater than one or less than one that actually specify or uh, it shows whether the image is uh, size of the image has increased or diminished right it is magnified or diminished so magnification m is given by size of object and this will be this is universal formula so it will be applicable everywhere size of image divided by size of object so it should be clear from here that if m is greater than 1 that means size of image is greater sorry size of object divided by size of uh, image or so if <clears throat> m is greater than 1 that means it is magnified and if m is less than 1 that means if it is a fraction that means size of object is greater than size of image then we say that this is diminished okay so that is about magnification and there are two types of magnification one is linear magnification and another is aerial magnification linear means the length or one of the dimensions either it will be length or width or height aerial magnification means the area or the surface will get uh, magnified that is the magnification in area and uh, so that is these are the two types of magnifications which we see that is linear magnification and aerial magnification so what is linear magnification again this linear magnification will be divided into two categories that is transverse and longitudinal so transverse and long longitudinals are the directions or the orientation so one is transverse and another is longitudinal so we'll see what is transverse when an object is placed perpendicular to the principal axis then the linear magnification is called lateral or transverse magnification so this is also called lateral so what is this this will be when object is perpendicular to principal axis in that case it is will be called lateral or transverse magnification so magnification anyways is what size of image divided by size of object so and in case of mirrors these mirrors if it is real right so if it is real this image will be formed in this side and object will also be in the same side but object will be like this if object is like this image will be like this that is it will be inverted if it is real image it will be inverted so the magnification formula is given by minus v by u that is the image distance divided by u is object distance now this is also equals to f divided by f minus u or this is equals to f minus v divided by f are all of you aware of these if not let me know we'll derive so can you do it once have you seen this earlier no or sir no okay so this is actually combination of magnification which is this and representation or we we actually apply the mirror formula that is 
what was mirror formula 1 by f is equals to 1 by u plus 1 by v so we apply this here right say for example uh, i'll say magnification is minus v by u correct so from this if i want to get minus v by u what will i do is i'll multiply this by minus v so if i do this i'll get minus p by f is equals to minus v by u minus 1 is it clear so what will be this this will give us minus v by u is equals to 1 minus v by f and what is that that is f minus v divided by f that's what this formula is right and another way is that you multiply this thing by u if we do that i'll get u by f is equals to 1 plus u by v that means u by v is equals to 1 minus u by f or that is equals to f minus u by f but what is magnification magnification is minus v by u so that means this is equals to f divided by u minus f so these are the derivations of this magnification formula so this magnification can be actually written in these different different forms again always use the sign convention while solving these problems so this was transverse or lateral magnification <coughs> so if you have to derive it you can derive it as well otherwise this is the transverse magnification let's move to the next that is the longitudinal so <coughs> Now all these are part of linear magnification, both transverse and longitudinal are part of linear magnification. So now how this longitudinal or what is this longitudinal magnification? In the previous case, object was perpendicular to the principal axis. So obviously here it will be opposite of that, that is object lies along the principal axis. Such magnification will be called longitudinal magnification so what do we have here this is called in this case the object will be along the principal axis that means now object will be like this the a and b so its image will be inverted how it will be inverted it will be like this suppose if it is here it will be like this so this is b dash this is a dash mm. so now the size of image and object will be or if i say magnification m which is equal to size of image divided by size of object so that will be equals to again minus v by u but here it won't be minus v because it will be actually v2 minus v1 that is the length mm. of object or image so v2 minus v1 divided by u2 minus u1 and negative sign so it is still v minus u but right now we are taking suppose if this is u1 this is u2 its length is u2 minus u1 and then if it is u2 this will be v2 and this will be v1 so v2 minus v1 and u2 minus u1 and you can see v2 minus v1 is in this direction that is this direction and u2 minus u1 is in this direction 
so that's why their directions are opposite so that is that's why there is a negative sign there right so that is the magnification in case of longitudinal magnification when the object is placed along the axis or the principal axis right and so that was about linear magnification next we have aerial or the magnification in area so aerial magnification so this means we are talking about the area so obviously suppose instead of an object like a straight line or a stick mostly we we will actually we all we can also see an object like this which has a surface area so now if this will gets magnified its length as as well as width both will get magnified right so the magnification will be there in both the cases the length and width both will get magnified and both will get magnified by same factor that means if this is l this is b that is length and width and the magnification is m by factor of m then length will increase to ml and width will increase to mb increase or decrease depends on whether it is magnification or uh, the image has diminished so in a 2d object if it is placed its plane perpendicular to the principal one here ye hath idhar lagta hai theek hai and it is sir okay so here aerial magnification we take and what is this case this restriction which is there is that the plane of 2d object is perpendicular to principal axis right so that is the case and in that case as we have seen the magnification that is surface magnification or aerial magnification given by ms that will be equals to area of image divided by area of object and because this it will magnifies both length and width as we have seen so suppose if it is a square it will be ml into mb sorry if even if it is a rectangle it will be mn into mb divided by l into b so that is equals to m square where m is the linear magnification so aerial magnification is equals to square of linear magnification right and only restriction is that the surface should be kept perpendicular the plane should be perpendicular to the principal axis okay now let's move to refraction and uh, as we have seen earlier or discussed earlier refraction is nothing but the phenomena which we observe when light changes its medium when a light ray enters a medium a different medium from an existing medium that is called refraction of light uh so could you like go up a bit um i just want to take a screenshot i'll send you the screenshots if you want uh okay but just so i can see just okay once. okay let me know when you are done oh sir could you go a bit more up okay sir that's all okay so now let's move to refraction
now what is refraction as we said it is bending of a ray of light passing from one medium to other medium so this is nothing but bending of light when it changes medium and what do we observe so medium suppose suppose this is medium 1 this is medium 2 m1 and m2 are two different mediums now there is concept of optically dense not dense actually denser or optically rarer so as you can see i said not dense but denser because this thing just like friction is relative so a particular surface may have less friction less friction as compared to some other surface but the same surface will or may have more friction as compared to some third surface same way here suppose there are two mediums m1 m2 m3 then m1 may be more denser as compared to m2 but less denser as compared to m3 so that is possible so that's why we use the term denser and rarer we don't use that a medium is dense and another medium is rare no so denser means that medium in which the speed of light decreases and rarer means that medium in which the speed of light increases so it depends on what it decides the speed the speed decides whether the medium is or the change in speed decides those that that's why let's say delta speed so in a denser medium change in speed is negative and in rarer medium change in speed is positive that is speed increases increase of speed means traveling more distance in same amount of time so you must have studied that snell's law right or in case of refraction what actually happens you but what you study is mostly that when light enters from rarer to denser or from denser to rarer what happens that's what you have studied i don't know whether you have studied the reason for that that why it bends away from the normal or why it bends towards the normal so let's see that here so these are two different cases m1 m2 and uh, here m2 m1 we take this as m1 is rarer than m2 that means speed of light in m2 will be less than m1 right so how can i write this now or what conclusion i get from this that v2 that is speed of light in medium 2 which is denser is less than v1 then okay now if a light ray travels from rarer to dense this is m1 m2 right m1 is rare so suppose it is traveling from rarer to medium correct so because i cannot draw dotted lines here so i'll draw it like this this is the initial direction of the incident ray or this is the incident ray this is angle of incidence that is between normal and incident ray okay now this is normal now what happens is we said that the speed of light is going to because it is from rarer to denser so speed of light should 
decrease that means if there was no change in medium for a given instance of time it would have reached suppose here but because it is denser medium speed should slow down that means the distance traveled should be now less and how is that possible we have two options now uh, for that let's take that one by one or one is by going in this direction that is by bending here or another is by bending in that is towards the normal so in which case do you think that it will travel less distance in the same amount of time when it goes like this so this is where the distance traveled by this will be less and here if it travels like this in the same amount of time it will travel more distance so that's why we take this that's why light actually bends towards the normal towards the normal when the light changes its medium from rare to from a rarer medium to a denser medium so this is what happens and just opposite of that will happen when it enters from denser medium to rarer medium so if it is say a denser medium then so this green line which you see here this green line this is the original path and now what happened from the original it got deviated right so this is called deviation delta delta is angle of deviation so from its original path the light ray has deviated by an angle delta that is called angle of deviation right and what exactly will be that delta and then this angle the again the angle with the normal that is called angle of refraction so from this figure i can see that this delta is equals to delta is equals to i minus r this is conclusion or this is the angle of deviation in case of when the light is entering from i mean rarer medium to denser medium now quickly we will see what happens in the second case so this is the incident right light ray right and because it is entering from denser to rarer so it will go away from the it will move away from the so it will be like this going away from the normal from its original path it has moved in this direction deviated like this and here it moved or deviated towards the normal right now here again this is angle of incident between the normal and the incident ray and this is the refracted ray so this angle is angle of refraction and this is the deviation so what do we conclude here here delta is equals to yeah what is delta delta is equals to r minus i now this is again plane geometry so if you don't understand it right now you can ask or you can try to explain it to yourself by applying geometry and let me know if you don't understand then i'll explain it in the next class now this is what happens during refraction that light bends either towards the normal or away from the normal towards the normal if it is from rarer to denser away from the normal if it is from denser to rarer then there is a deviation and the deviation delta is given by either i minus r or r minus i in both the ways it is the uh, 
you can say it is the difference of angle of incidence and angle of refraction right and always take the positive difference so that is if it is if angle r is more take r minus i if angle i is more take i minus r that's what is uh, angle of deviation now based on this we have a law of refraction given by scientist named snell and that's why the laws are called snell's law just like laws of refraction these are very simple it just simply says the ratio of sine of angle of incidence to the angle of refraction is called refractive index actually law is that it is constant the ratio is constant for given two medium right but numerically how we are going to write is that sin i divided by sin r is equals to mu of one medium with reference to another medium the two media can be written as say mu1 mu2 mu1 to that is which is traveling from medium 1 to medium 2 then this is equals to mu2 by mu1 and that is equals to sin i divided by sin r this is what snell's law or refractive index is now remember the refractive index is again a relative term of one medium with respect to another medium so it will be always written as mu 1 2 or mu 1 2 like this that is of medium 1 with respect to 2 now the same thing if the it is always with us if if a medium a refractive index is with respect to air that is called refractive index of the medium or the absolute refractive index of the medium if it is with respect to air then it is just called refractive index otherwise refractive index of medium one with respect to medium two right so that's about refractive index now refractive index is that characteristic which decides speed of light in it and obviously it is a scalar quantity it has no unit because it is ratio of trigonometric ratios so it is actually ratio of ratios so it cannot have any unit and it will be of two types the refractive index is of two types one is absolute refractive index and another is relative which just now i explained you <clears throat> so absolute means what the first medium is air and the second medium is your medium so when light travels from air to any transparent medium so the light is traveling from air to medium so it is from this from left to right so if that is the case this is called refractive index and this is nothing but we have already seen one that is using snell's law we saw that it is equals to the ratio of sine of angle of incidence and angle of refraction but even without that we can know that is actually ratio of speeds of light in different medium that's what is refractive index and from there from that velocity we actually derive this and we see that this ratio of velocity is actually equals to ratio of sine of angle of incidences and angle of uh, refraction so what is that this the speed in first medium that is velocity in air divided by velocity in medium 
so velocity in air is actually c and if in medium it is given by v then we say that mu of a medium is equals to c by v this is what reflective index of a medium or absolute reflective of a index uh, reflective index of a medium means coming to the relative one so this is when light travels as we have seen from medium 1 to medium 2 so it is refractive index of medium 1 when light travels from medium 1 to medium 2 the refractive index of medium 2 with respect to medium 1 is this so when we will read it we will read it as refractive index of medium 2 with respect to medium 1 so this should be clear that first medium is in which the light is incident and second medium is which in which the light bends right so this one is equals to again this is equals to v1 divided by v2 just like this here it was v air divided by v medium here it will be v1 divided by v2 and that is also equals to or we'll leave it here v1 divided by v2 right and c by v1 is what that is mu1 and c by v2 is what mu2 so what will be mu2 by mu1 mu2 by mu1 that will be actually equals to v1 by v2 so that's why we say that this is also equals to mu2 by mu1 and that's why we read it as refractive index of medium 2 with respect to medium 1 because medium 1 is in denominator right so this is what refractive index of medium 1 with respect to medium 2 means and that's why it is called a relative refractive index Now, on what all factors this refractive index uh, depends, that is dependence of refractive index. So, there are some factors on which it depends. Obviously, the first one is the nature of the media of incidence and refraction, that is nature of two media, right? Second, it depends on the light which is which we are using so it also depends on the light or we can say it is dependent on the color of light and color is given by one of the characteristics that is called wavelength so it is depending on it depends on the wavelength third it also depends on the temperature of the media nature as well as temperature of the media <clears throat> so when temperature is more refractive index decreases so when temperature increases refractive index decreases refractive index decreases means it becomes rarer so light travels faster in hot medium or in medium with higher temperature so these are the points which we should remember about the dependence of refractive index okay now there is another concept here that is called principle of reversibility of light principle of and this is something which is again 
uh, most of the uh, examples of uh, the concepts which we study in life we will have easily available in our day to day life so this where do we observe we observe it when suppose there is a mirror in front of you or mirror near by you whatever if if you can see a person in mirror then that person can also see you in that mirror and if both two two person are there in a room and one person can use the mirror to see second person then second person can also use the same mirror at the same position to see the same to see the first man or the first person i think you must have seen this in your uh, day to day life and if angle is such that first person cannot see the second person through the mirror then second person will also not be able to see the person through the mirror the first person through the mirror this is called this is result of principle of reversibility of light so we'll see this in detail in the next session i'll uh, end this session now and we'll restart or we'll uh, start the new session immediately so there won't be any delay in the new session